people like me move tin. When the project got started, he said, Hesburgh, what's the maintenance philosophy? And I said, very simply, it flew into my station, it'll fly out. And that we have to remember all the time that airlines are in the transportation business, Boeing's in the airplane business. It's the maintenance community's job to minimize the interruption of service. Our fundamental job is to put an airworthy airplane on the gate, period. So one of the things we looked at was, uh, let's design this thing and decide who we're going to design it for from a maintenance standpoint. And we said, who's going to get you departure reliability out of this maintenance community? Isn't going to be engineering, isn't going to be stores. You know, be overnight or hangar maintenance. The guy that's going to get you departure reliability is a gate mechanic. Because if he doesn't sign the logbook, the airplane doesn't go. It's as simple as that. You want to go to Cleveland, you got to satisfy him. So when you design for maintenance, then you ought to design to meet his needs first. This is not to say that all of these other people are second class citizens. They aren't but designed for the most demanding needs. You want 98.5%, then don't design it so it's easy for a bench mechanic to overhaul it. Design it so it's easy for a gate mechanic to repair it and to keep the airplane moving. Because these airlines were with us, they brought that practicality, that reality, to the design table. And it showed up every day in, in a thousand different ways. They were not resident here by being kept in a closet. They were in the room with us at regular Boeing meetings, at design issues, at design build teams, at management discussions, and so on. They were active partners. And it is because of that, unquestionably in my mind, uh, that the design is the way it is. Bike-based systems are very sensitive to voltage transients, for one thing. You see in the laboratory, we see 115 volt 400 cycle, as pure as a new driven snow. The second to the last thing at an airline that gets maintenance is the ground power carts. The last thing is a captain seat cushion, of course. The result of that is that most power carts out there are terrible worldwide. They see 115 volt 400 cycle, good characterized AC power twice a day. Once in the morning when they pass through 115 volts going up. And once in the evening when you shut it off and they pass 115 volts going down. Well, the consequences of that are you've got systems out there, and this is what bit us for years, that need this pure as a new driven snow power. The first time the ground power cart belches or snorts or does anything else, you'd set all of these messages all over the place. So the byte circuitry and the monitors and the logic and all of the other stuff that goes to make up byte were designed to accommodate things like dirty power. Now, I have what I call my peanut butter theory of maintenance, that notwithstanding any probability calculations, the peanut butter side of the toast always hits the rug. And if I'm out fixing the airplane and you held information away from me, the culprit is the information you hid from me all the time. It's not going to be what you told me is at fault. So what we did on this airplane with the design of the CMC is we said, don't do that. We said that there are, there are three valid answers to any question that can be asked. And the question in terms of bite results and maintenance is what's broke? Huh? The valid answers are yes, no, I don't know. Beats the hell out of me. Okay. Now that's a valid answer, beats the hell out of me. I mean, mechanics have been using them for years, you know, standing out there trying to figure out what's wrong. I don't know, what do you think's wrong? I don't know, what do you think is wrong? It beats the hell out of me, let's figure it out. 
That's all we're saying. Don't make decisions for the mechanic. If you can't tell him unequivocally what's wrong, tell him what you know. And let him make the decisions. Because he's more street smart than that bite logic will ever be. So build the bite system to accommodate that skill. It is another tool in his box. Not a dictator. It's merely giving him information to help him arrive at his conclusions. Now that's different than the way other bite systems are designed. We don't make any decisions for the mechanic. We're a lot smarter than we were 30 and 35 years ago. Sure, we've got more integration, we've got more gadgetry that is avionic and electronic, but it is still just an airplane. There is only so many ways that you can build a hydraulic system. There are only so many ways that you can build an air conditioning system. The pointy end with windows is still the front, you see? So in spite of it all, that's all it is. It's just another airplane. And an old airplane fixer shouldn't be intimidated by it, and he's not going to be. Guys out on the flight line like the airplane. They're using the devices. They're using the gadgetry, if you will. Uh, I think it's going to do extremely well. You can go up to an airplane, I don't care, any airplane, be a brand new one or one that's 30 years old, and you can just sense it. You get a certain feel around airplanes as to whether it's a clean airplane or not. This is a clean airplane. It's a fun airplane.